Okay. Um, in terms of the agenda, um, we're going to give a little update. So Tom's going to talk you through national programmes and some information around that. And then James will take you through Chance to Shine Schools. Um, Charlie's going to spend a little bit of time updating you on women and girls cricket and opportunities to support you as clubs. Um, I'll give you an update on safeguarding. Um, Mick's going to talk to you about the game-wide insurance that's linked to the new safe hands management system. Um, and then it'll take, Mick will also take you through some funding opportunities and, and support that's out there relating to COVID. Charlie's also going to talk to you about the Funds for Runs campaign and an opportunity there to access some funding for various projects. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit, bit of an update on coach education. And then the final two points, Charlie's going to give you an update on disability champion clubs. And James will finish with a bit of an update around the ACO and various courses on offer. And as I said, there'll be, a, there'll be an opportunity at the end to, to ask any questions, um, either via the chat or by unmuting. Obviously, there's a lot of people on the call, so if we can try and use the chat as much as possible, it'll just help us uh, with efficiency through the call. Okay, um, so I will now hand over to Tom, who's going to talk you through national programmes. Cheers, Richard. Hi, everyone. Um, so just going to spend a bit of time talking through uh, all Stars and, and Dynamo's cricket, which are now the kind of national programmes. Uh, so first of all, All Stars cricket. So this is really the the entry point. I know a lot of people know about All Stars, which is great. So this is the entry point for kids getting into uh, cricket at the moment, uh, from five to eight year olds, um, and it's about inspiring a generation of players and volunteers to, to get involved in the in the in cricket. Uh, and we've seen some really good numbers across Derbyshire the last few years, from about sixty clubs, um, hopefully taking part again this year. Um, so All Stars can be run in kind of two windows. Uh, so you've got your traditional and what we see is a kind of junior cricket season window, then you've got your um, kind of summer holiday one. Um, the launch this year is from the 7th of May, and you can start them any day after that. Um, but the reason why it's kind of put into those two windows is because that links to the two kind of key marketing windows that the ECB run. So they run one up to the launch in May, and they start again um, from June and into July for that summer holiday period as well. Um, Every, for every participant, um, the RFP 40 quid, clubs get £10 of that from this year, which used to be £5, which is great now, it's £10. Uh, so you're getting, you're getting a bit more money back for every uh, participant who joins. And on the on the photo there on the right, you'll see all the, the kit that they get. So they get that kit bag with um, the personalised shirt, there's a, there's a bat, there's a ball in the, uh, the bag, which is a uh, fantastic scene. Uh, all the kids sitting up in, in those shirts, as I know a lot of you. Um, no, and the names are great because it gives you that opportunity to engage with the kids uh, straight away and, and knowing their name. Um, a bit around kit, so that's changed slightly. So for every kid, again, that signs up, you'll get £5 to spend in the club shop. Uh, that's for um, centres that have run previously and for new centres, but new centres will also get some um, kit to, to start as well. Um, so that's going to replace the uh, little top-up bags that you've got previously um, which have just got you know a couple of bats and some uh, stumps and various things in um, this year you'll just get the the money and you'll be able to just spend that on whatever you want if you need more balls or you need some more different size bats or anything like that you'll be able to just spend that uh, and that shop will open from um, about April time um, and the link will go to kind of the main admin for kind of your your all-stars program to the club shops. So uh, money can't buy experiences. Um, hopefully we'll be able to run them again. So we've run things like God of Honours uh, previously and uh, had opportunities to come to the ground, uh, opportunities to get the mascot out. So hopefully we'll be able to do some of that again. Um, if not, the plan is to do try and do some virtual stuff if we if we can. So that should be good. Um, do you want to move on, Richard? Okay, so Dynamo's Cricket. So this is the... Um, the next programme, so it's a new one that was meant to launch last year, uh, so it's going to launch this year instead. And this is kind of the next step from, from All Stars. So it's for 8 to 11-year-olds. Uh, it's for people that have done All Stars uh, and kind of progressing slightly. 
and it's also for, for new kids to the game. Um, the key around the Dynamo's idea is it's, it's kind of complementing existing junior cricket, so it's not competing with them. So it's a, it's a countdown format linked to the 100. Um, and it's a, it's a really good opportunity for, for more girls to get involved in the game. Because uh, we know at this age group, they, they start to want to play girls only, uh, girls only sport. Um, and it's also a, another good way of um, using it as like a training program that allows you um, to kind of progress kids through um, and, and get them ready for your, your quick cricket or your under 11 programs or whatever you're running. Again, there's the two windows that you can run this in linked to the marketing. The key with this, as I said, is it's linked to the 100. So that idea of running something in the summer um, is, is, is a really good idea from, from our point of view. There's going to be a lot of promotion that you'll see on, on Sky Sports because they're a big backer of it. Uh, so you'll see a lot of promotion for Dynamo's on, on Sky and linked to the 100. Uh, slightly different kind of price point. So again, RRP of £40. Uh, clubs received £25 back um, for this programme mainly because the participants get a slightly less kind of physical kit. So you'll see on the right there, they get, uh, they get a T-shirt, which is a New Balance T-shirt. Again, name and number, 100 branded uh, on, the, on the sleeve. But also they get um, some digital stuff. There's a stat out there that uh, kids in this age bracket, about 85% of them have got access to a, a phone or a tablet. Um, so kind of tap into that. So they've got uh, an app that will be available. Uh, some people might have seen it last year it was launched uh, and there's different skill content and activities on there. There's going to be some um, videos and, and links to some of the 100 players. Um, and it's also some of the cricket attacks cards on there. So that if anyone's heard of like the top trumps games uh, where you have kind of stats and things to be that on there. So all the 100 players will have a card. It will say what their batting rating is and their bowling rating and the, the kids will be able to collect those, which, which is really good. Um, again, money can't buy a link to the 100. We'll hopefully try and do something uh, with Derbyshire again, um, whether that's Guard of Honours or Days of the Crown. Again, we've got the option to do some virtual stuff if, if we need to. Richard, you want to move on? Okay, uh, one thing to say on All Sun Diamonds if there's any clubs that are, are brand new and looking to get involved, please get in touch and we can kind of walk you through and, and work out how it will work at your club. Um, just on activator training, so a couple of changes on this for this year. So for an existing activator who's been on the kind of face-to-face -face training before, um, two little things for you to do. So you'll have some e-learning modules and a safeguarding course that's built into that uh, to go through. And then there'll just be a bit of a webinar-based fresher, um, covering a lot of the COVID guidance, give you um, you know, use it as a bit of a QA, and a give you a bit of support, and that'll be your training done for this year. Uh, for a brand new activator, again, the e-learning modules and, and the safeguarding, then a bit of an introduction. Uh, we'll cover um, a lot of um, things to do with... Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> the introduction. Um, we'll cover a lot of things to do with, um, just said, safeguarding, uh, and any of the stuff that we we do in the face-to-face -face, um, activities and, and training, but isn't massively practical. So we'll go through a lot of that stuff, uh, kind of tee um, a lot of the, the practical up for hopefully some face-to-face -face delivery, which will be um, about an hour and a half to two hours. Hopefully we'll be able to do face-to-face. -face. If not, the plan is to do some um, more virtual uh, training if needed. Uh, the plan with that will be to do that kind of from from April uh, into early May, if we can get outside and, and do some face-to-face -face training. Want to move on, Richard? Okay, so a few next steps for clubs. Um, so adding the programme details onto Club Spark, um, it's a really big thing. So the launch uh, will be on the 22nd of March uh, for everyone to start signing up to, um, to get involved, sign the kids up. Um, there's a prior to window that starts on the 16th of March as well for anyone who's done it previously. Um, so, so getting your programs on is, is really important. Again, if you're a little bit unsure on when to start, uh, please get in touch with your, your club support officer, so me, Charlie or James, and we'll, we'll give you a bit of help on when we think it's, it's best for your club to run it. Uh, the next thing that I know is becoming a bit of a the bane of a few people's uh, lives at the moment is, is Stripe. 
Uh, so I sent an email out uh, today to the clubs that the ECB don't think are uh, currently set up on strike properly. So you've had to re-verify your accounts from, from last year. Um, if you've got any issues, um, please get in touch with the ECB. So in this in this email, uh, in, sorry, in this presentation, there's the two links there to the, the access link to get you on just the Stripe account and then also the email from the ECB to um, get in touch with their, kind of their help support and they'll be able to, to walk you through that. Um, and then the checklist needs completing as well. So please um, register your club is the first thing to do and sign the terms and conditions. Um, what we found in the last year is if, if clubs don't do that properly, that can um, cause a couple of issues getting you on the website and not showing. So please make sure you've done that. Uh, and then there's a relevant kind of an update first aid certificate needs to be um, uploaded. Your insurance document. Uh, and what we need to see on that is that you've got the correct uh, employers and public liability, uh, not just kind of the, the the cover of your insurance. Now, uh, we need to see that you've got 10 million employers and 5 million public um, liability. Uh, and then we also need your safe hand certificate of your uh, club welfare officer as well. Just on the marketing very quickly. Um, so we know that one of the big things previously around marketing, this has been in schools. Um, and doing assemblies and taste sessions. Uh, James will go through some of our plans in a minute around schools, but unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do you know, quite as much as we have for clubs around national programmes. Um, so There's really an opportunity for the clubs this year to try and pick up some of that slack. So if there are schools around you that we can't get into, um, is an opportunity for the clubs to work a little bit closer and either get something to home on parent mail um, or get in at a later date uh, when when the schools are, are, are letting people in. Um, there's a load of resources in, in the resource hub. Again, the links um, on this presentation um, that has got all the posters um, and, and leaflets you can put on social media. Uh, it's really good. It's great for All-Stars Dynamics, but there's also a lot of women's softball and um, stuff to code on there, which is, which is, it is really useful. Um, so previously, that was, a lot of the All-Stars stuff has been kept on Clubs Park, that's been moved to that resource hub now. Um, anyone can access it. You just have to create a, a bit of an account and the, the ECB will, will verify you. Um, social media is a big thing this year. So making sure you get lots of stuff on social media, use those images that are on the resource hub. Um, again, local media. So if you've got any links with uh, local newspapers, local radio, uh, they're a good place to, to get your programs promoted. Then also using your contacts uh, on the club part system, so anyone who's been involved in your programs previously, they're all safe there and you can email them, let them know your programs are happening, um, and you'll have a direct link that you can use to get them to sign up directly to your program. Okay, as I said, uh, if anyone has any questions, if it's kind of specific to your, your club, please get in touch with us, or we'll, we'll be able to help you out. If there's any new clubs out there looking to, to get involved on a bit more information, again, get in touch. We'll give you a Give you a helping hand, Richard. Any just, any questions one, that need answering now? Just one question. I think it's a really quick one to answer. Um, are all stars and dynamos activated programs the same? Yes. So it's one training program uh, for both for both programs. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay. Thanks. Over to you, James. Thanks, Richard. Um, hi, everyone. Evening. Hope everyone's doing well. Keeping safe. Um, so yeah, obviously it's been quite a challenging year for for us and, and school delivery, um, but we've we've managed to utilise the, the furlough scheme well and, and managed to keep all of our four full time coaches um, on board, which is great. And obviously with Boris's announcement last week um, that schools can go back from from Monday, um, we're obviously making a massive commitment to make sure that we are we're in and we're supporting the club's programmes as much as possible. So um, thank you, as Tom said, to everyone that's put their programmes on the Club Spark. Uh, it makes our life easier. So we know when we, uh, uh, to, to promote them, because obviously there's those two windows. Um, so if you are looking, or if you have put your programme on, should I say, and, and you're looking to start straight away, and um, we're utilising this time between um, well, Monday and, and the Easter break uh, to do as many road shows in, in local schools to your programme as much as possible. 
Um, and it's quite an engagement day, should I say. And an engagement day is a, is a full day at the school of, of taster sessions. Um, so we, we've been speaking to schools um, and we're getting those booked in. So as soon as uh, we've got one booked in around your, uh, around your local club, um, your club and community cricket officer will be involved and in letting you know so that you, you know those dates. Um, we did book in some whole school programmes, which is a six week programme, again, for a full day now. Um, we did book some of those in January. Um, obviously, it all went a little bit wrong then, um, but we are honouring those. Those that we've booked in for January, um, we are honouring those and we will be delivering those programmes uh, straight after the Easter term. Um, and, and as Tom said, if, if, if there's any sort of promotional material um, that you have or, or you want us to try and get into those schools, you know, please send it to to your, to your CCCO. Um, we will do everything that we can to make sure that it gets out and about and, and like Tom said into into parent mail um, which we think is going to be a really good tool for us to use going forwards um, any questions that you have around schools you know please get in touch with me um, that'd be great in terms of the secondary schools as well I, I had a chat with um, as, as the schools that have entered our club competitions and um, just to get a bit of a feel of what they uh, might be able to do this year and there's been a lot of positivity around it so hopefully we might be able to run some Derbyshire school competitions this year again if, if you have links to your secondary schools and you think that's something they'd want to get involved with please drop them a, uh, give them my email address and and we can look for that going forwards thank you Richard I think it's Charlie now yeah thank you Charlie you're on mute Sorry, uh, yes, could you split the slide over, Rich? Oh, too many, there we go. Thanks, thanks. Uh, yeah, evening everyone, hope you're, hope you're all well. Um, I'm just gonna talk through a few, three or four slides about the Women Girls game, just a few updates, uh, where we're at and what we're hoping to deliver over the next year or so. Um, on this slide, I won't read out each point, but there's a few bullet points there around where, where we see the Women and Girls game and why there's such a big opportunity to be involved in this. Um, and the massive growth, growth potential for, for cricket. Um, obviously, it's a huge priority for ECB and us uh, at the DCF over the next few seasons. Um, there's you know huge growth potential in the game, and we want to try and work with clubs to to allow the sport to be accessible for for both genders and make it a bit more gender balanced as the game progresses forward in the next couple of years. So, how we're going to do that is on the next slide, please, Rich. So four main areas we're going to work through are to work with clubs to create an inclusive environment for women and girls. Uh, to do that, we need to make sure that clubs have welcoming facilities that are suitable for all. So we're going to do this by, um, you know, investing in projects that allow clubs to become more accessible, more, more gender balanced and more welcoming for families, women, children, men of all ages. Um, so that's a real priority. Second up is to create more female sections, so more girls teams, more more women's teams uh, at club level. This is this will increase the opportunities available, um, hardball, softball, and as well as having a big recruitment drive for, for, to get girls into national programs. Um, obviously, these national programs feed feed the bottom of the pathway and give us those numbers to work with in order to create those teams at older age groups. So. There's a real um, drive this year, not only from us, but also at ECB to try and maximise the girls that enter the pathway at those programmes. Third, third one is uh, looking to help clubs diversify their governance. Um, and what we mean by this is we're looking to increase the number of females involved on club committees um, work with clubs to diversify their development plans and work with them to have plans in place to increase re female representation, um, not only to have someone on the committee in charge of women and girls cricket, but also to have a mix of women and men on the committee itself. Um, fourthly, um, develop and encourage a new wave of female officials. Um, so we're going to work to put on as many courses as we can, female only coaching courses, officials, scoring and umpiring, uh, as well as activators for national programmes and all the volunteering opportunities. So they're the four main ways we're going to look to grow the game, uh, uh, transform the women and girls game over the next few years. So just flick one on, Rich. 
Thank you. Um, so here we've got what potential uh, women and girls offer could look like across the county. So this doesn't mean every club will run something like this, but this is where we, we want to be in terms of what opportunities are available for women and girls. Um, so obviously you can see there at the bottom end on the left, we've got national programmes uh, and quick cricket, which we see as a position of strength at the moment. We have a good number of girls uh, in the, over the past couple of years that have played uh, and participated in national programmes. Um, again, as I said, more emphasis this year will be on girls entering these programmes to try and get it more towards 50-50. To do this, um, we're going to have a big push and recruitment drive for female activators. So if your club um, has any potential female volunteers that you could train as activators, then we'd actively encourage that. And also at Dynamos, there's the option to run a girls only uh, Dynamos if you want to, as Tom mentioned. Um, so that's a real potential opportunity for, for clubs who want to have a good number of girls coming in all at once at their age 9 to 11. Then all the way at the top end in gold on the right, you can see women's softball, women's hardball. These are the two main offers um, for women. We see these as a position of strength as well, particularly women's softball. We've got nearly 35 clubs that played in 2019, um, which is a good, strong base uh, to work from. And we'll, we'll always be looking to, to grow this area. We're going to run some softball festivals again this year. Um, subject to government guidance uh, to try and get some new teams involved. And women's hardball, we've got four four hardball teams in Derbyshire that play women's cricket in, in the East Midlands Women's League. And again, this is a position of strength, but we want to look to improve on this um, to, to ensure that there's a plenty of offers countywide for those women that want to play hardball cricket. And then in the middle, in the light blue, um, this is where probably our main area of focus will be. You can see now in the red square, um, some girls only opportunities at these ages, whether it be under 12, under 13, 14, 15, that, that don't already exist. So we're currently working with a small number of groups to try and work through what that offer might look like um, going forward to provide girls coming out of national programmes in quick cricket, uh, the opportunity to play some, some league offer and some competitive cricket um, should they want to. So. That is currently where there isn't much offering. So that's where we're going to really focus on trying to bring in some offers over the next couple of years. Next slide, please, Rich. So what are we going to offer this year? Um, so firstly, women's softball festivals. Um, I'm hoping to offer eight festivals across the county um, for any club who wants to host one uh, or take part. Uh, I'll be sending out a, an expression of interest in the coming weeks. Um, whether you want to enter just a team of eight players um, or you want to host a festival, that'll, in, that'll be included on the form. Um, and from there, we'll, we'll pick uh, who we believe to be the most suitable and, and um, best host at the time. Um, and obviously, these festivals will be subject to any government guidance that comes out and the ECB playing guidance. Uh, women's softball kit. Uh, this is launching this month on Serious Cricket website. Um, as soon as this goes live, I'll send this out to all clubs. I know there's quite a big demand for this. For those clubs that play women's softball, there's, there's, there's no kit at the moment, but that will be coming live on Serious Cricket website soon. So keep your eye out for that. As I mentioned, we're looking to bring in a girls under 12 league or under 11 league, uh, still to be confirmed. Um, and I'll again, this will be an expression of interest for anyone who wants to take part. This will be going out to all clubs in the coming weeks as well. Quick cricket, uh, all the local leagues, the local junior leagues um, will be offering quick cricket in some form for girls only. Um, so there'll be at least a couple of weeks in the schedule that will be dedicated to girls only. Um, so there's that opportunity there for those clubs that want to enter a girls quick team. Activator training, as Tom's touched upon, um, we want to try and get as many female activators involved in the game as we can. So that will be running in April. Coach education, uh, we're going to look to run at least one uh, female only coach education foundation one course. Uh, one to one club support, I'm going to be trying to speak to all clubs who run women or girls cricket over the next couple of months, just to catch up and see where we can offer any area of support. Girls summer camps, uh, we're going to be running these in the summer holidays, uh, girls only 
good way to um, keep girls involved throughout the six week holidays. And lastly, as I've already mentioned, the Girls Only Dynamo Centre. So quite a lot of on offer in 2021 if, you want, if you're a girl looking to take part in the game. So these are where the opportunities will be. Last slide, Rich, from me, I think, for now. Um, so what are the next steps? As I said, I'll be in contact with all girls' clubs and women's clubs over the next few weeks, as well as those clubs that have development plans in, in that area. Uh, my, me, James and Tom will be in contact for attracting more girls to take part in your national programmes. Start trying to identify any female activators. If you run national programmes, try and, try and please try and think where you might be able to find a female activator. It, it will really help your girls' participation and enjoyment in, in the programmes. And start thinking about how your club can be involved in women and girls cricket uh, if it's not already for this season coming. So can you enter under nine girls team, for example, in the quick local league? Can you enter our girls under 12 competition? Or can you even enter one of our women's softball festivals, um, which is just eight players? Um, can you find eight women, girlfriends, wives, partners that want to want to be involved in that? So just a few things to think about. Um, that's all from me, Rich. Thanks, Charlie. Um, just, just one quick question that's popped up in the chat. Um, yeah. Is it possible for clubs to merge girls' teams who would struggle to put a side together but may have four or five girls who would be interested? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, want to try and avoid <laughs> big groups of clubs joining together, but if two clubs want to merge to form one team, then that's absolutely fine. Um, and I've just seen one from Rich, so uh, is it... Um, softball or hardball uh, this is yet to be we've not yet decided this um but um we'll be consulting with clubs to to make sure that that offers the right one um but whether it be incredible or hardball we'll then we'll, um, we'll come to that decision in due course okay thanks charlie thank you very much um okay so i'm just going to move on i'm just going to give a, a a brief update around safeguarding um I'm conscious a few of you may have attended the, the welfare or the safeguarding officers call yesterday, um, but I just thought I'd, I'd give you a bit of an update. Um, you may be aware, you may have seen it um, or had some information through, and some of you may have already started the process, but the ECB have recently established a new system called the Safe Hands Management System, which is effectively a, a tool for clubs to use to better manage their safeguarding within the club. Um, the idea behind it is that, that cricket clubs will be able to um, register on it, input the club officials, so captains, secretaries, junior coordinators, coaches, and so on, uh, that have official roles within the club um, that, that need DBSs as an example or safeguarding qualifications. Um, so you'd enter the details onto the site and then it would automatically pull through from the DBS system whether that person has a DBS or not and allow you as, as county welfare officers or chairs of clubs to be able to track and monitor that. Um, it'll flag things up. So if there are coaches that within the club that don't have a DBS, as an example, it will tell you that and help you through initiating applications. The same for safeguarding. Um, now, in the long term, this will be rolled out across the whole game, um, and it will hopefully, or it will uh, in the long term, talk to some of the other systems. So, for example, play cricket, where you as clubs at the moment will input your data onto play cricket. Um, so to try and have a, a single sign-in system where you don't have to continuously input data in, into different um, systems more than once. Um, in terms of the rollout, so we're currently in phase one. So phase one is... Club mark clubs, so those clubs in the county who have previously been club mark or currently have club mark accreditation. So 39 clubs initially uh, are being introduced to the system. Um, and nationally, the, the process is to get all national club mark clubs on the system first. Um, there's around 1,500 clubs nationally to go on there, and they're introducing uh, 100 clubs a week at the moment. So I think we've got seven or eight clubs on, on the system to date with a couple more going on each week. So over the next sort of 10 weeks or so, um, we, we will get all of our club mark clubs on, on there. Um, and then the second phase for us as a county is to introduce clubs with junior sections. Um, so any club with a junior section will be in the next phase, which is likely to be towards the end of the summer going into the winter. 
Um, once we've got all, all clubs with junior sections on, we'll then open it up to clubs with um, just senior teams. Um, as I said, the, the, the process is initially to get all club mark clubs on. There's 100 going on a week. and we, we hope by the end of July, all of our clubs will be compliant in terms of, sorry, all of our club mark clubs will be compliant in terms of having all their officials listed um, along with EBS and safeguarding for the relevant positions. Um, okay, so if you have any questions on that, just please add it into the chat. Um, one thing that, to mention that Mick's going to talk through in a moment is um, for those clubs who are being um, introduced to the system now, there's, there's the game-wide insurance. So there's an insurance offer which clubs will be able to access um, as part of registering for the system. But I'll let Mick talk you through that in a second. Um, if you haven't already, I think Mick mentioned it on the call yesterday, there's a there's the ECB website, the safeguarding site, um, where there's lots of relevant information regarding COVID um, and what to do in the current situation, how you can safeguard your players through this time. Um, something else to look out for, so around April time, the ECB are going to be launching an introductory safeguarding course that's open to all all than anyone within a club environment who you believe is appropriate to do that course. So I'll give a few examples. You know, I'm sure all of you as clubs have got parents that are helping out with junior teams that might not have a coaching qualification. They've probably got a D, well, I'd hope they'd have a DBS if they're, they're sort of long-term contact with players, but they've probably or might not have any safeguarding expertise or experience. Um, now, the idea behind this course is that person would be able to get a basic introductory um, information around. Um, go through. Mick, you're unmuted. <laughs> uh, basic introductory information around safeguarding just to help them through that role. Another example would be the, the chair of a cricket club who's uh, got ultimately got the oversight and, and responsibility for safeguarding in the club, but might not be a coach might not be the welfare officer and therefore hasn't had any real uh, cricket safeguarding training. So that's where this course is going to be aimed at, at, at trying to plug that gap. Um, I'm, I'd imagine all welfare officers are aware now that the, the titles are going to be changing. So they, they have always or historically been called uh, club welfare officers and now going to be called club safeguarding officers. And that is purely just to bring us in line with national terminology. So some of the governing bodies like Sport England, um, safeguarding organisations would refer to the role as a safeguarding role. Um, and, and it's just purely to bring us in line with that. Um, DBS, as, as we're still um, under restrictions, it, it is now, well, it's still online um, and it's still a virtual uh, verification process. And there's only myself, Mick, Charlie, Tom, James, I think I said everyone, Angela is the county welfare officer that can verify uh, as we stand. So um, normally you're, you would have someone, maybe your club welfare officer in, in your club that can verify DBSs. At the moment, it is just um, county board staff that can do that. Um, if you do want to, if anyone within your club needs a DBS, please get in contact with us and we can initiate the application um, and go through the verification process. It's really simple to do um, and, it, and it's, it comes through much quicker now than it used to. Um, and then the final point for me on safeguarding is we are, well, we've already delivered one yesterday and there's another one on the 10th of March. We're running some support webinars for club safeguarding officers, previously welfare officers. Um, and that's just a, a, to share a bit more detail around some of the things I've just mentioned. Uh, an opportunity for welfare officers, safeguarding officers to um, share best practice and discuss any challenges that they may face within the club um, and just try and bring the network together, really. So all I'd ask is if you have um, your welfare officer um, that is interested or hasn't attended, signed up for that, then please pass on the information. Um, it'd be great to try and cover all, all of them um, on these two calls. Uh, the link is in the slides, so you'll be able to click on that when we send them through um, at some point tomorrow. Right, Mick, you can unmute yourself now. Thank you, Richard. I thought we were going to have the first dog incident of our webinars. Um, but thankfully, she's, I think she's settled down now. So 
Can you just, uh, I think it says safe hands management system insurance first, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So just want to quickly touch on this. Richard's uh, mentioned the safe hands management system. And uh, while there's only a small number of clubs on it at the moment, it is in due course, every club is going to be enrolled on that system. So it's an opportunity for clubs to look at their insurance coverage and access some uh, free free coverage for the club. Um, so the, the free coverage that you get when you're on the system is uh, public liability, employer's liability, profession, professional indemnity, directors and officers liability and cyber liability. Um, it's with a company called Howden's Insurance Brokers who offer uh, lots of all risk policies for for sports clubs. So it's it's somebody somebody new to new to me, um, but the process looks pretty simple. Uh, you don't have to you don't have to accept the insurance. Uh, you can, you can accept the free insurance and stick with your existing supply for everything else, or you can you can get a quotation for adding on buildings and equipment, or personal insurance for your for your players. So. Very simple process. The feedback that we've had, I've had a bit of feedback with the clubs that have on it, and the estimated saving is around £300 as a minimum, but I know for, personally I've had a couple of clubs, one that saved £700 and one that saved £800. So certainly um, worth looking at for, for your clubs once, you, once you're on that system. And as Richard says, first phase club mark, accredited clubs, second phase clubs with a junior section, and, and then remaining clubs to follow so uh, the information that that you need to put on the system is actually no different to the information that you need to that you should have already so although it's a new system and there will be one or two little teething issues at the start i think it'll be a great system for supporting clubs as we go along and, and as i say you've got the bonus of getting some additional support for your clubs uh richard do you want to move on okay so just a Bit, quite a few clubs asking about funding support so just going to go through one or two bits that are, that are currently happening and then one or two bits that might be happening so in terms of uh, ECB funding support at the moment focus is around has been around COVID and emergency funding so there's two parts to that first of all the loan scheme which which some clubs have accessed uh, and that that will be opening definitely uh, and then there's a return to cricket fund, which quite a few clubs have accessed. And we've got a number of also application forms in the system as well. So uh, that's open until sometime towards the end of the March. Uh, offers grants up to £3,000 to support clubs who can identify a shortfall over the 12 months between July 2020 and July 2021. And it's, it's around preparation, essential day-to-day -day running and maintenance costs. This can include ground renovation, COVID, extra costs for COVID. Um, if anybody does want, I know it's late in the day, but if people want an application form for that or are interested in looking at that, just please get hold of me. My email address is on, on, the, uh, on the system there and on the slides. Uh, in terms, I mentioned the emergency loan but also there's the interest-free loan, the ECB interest-free loan, which is available to all clubs for a wide variety of different projects. Um, that's, a, that, that's going to be open indefinitely. Can help clubs for capital projects, things like nets, machinery, site screens, all the things that are quite difficult to access uh, funding for. And there's a, there's a link there that people can used to apply for that or, or just simply express an interest now the good news on the ecb interest free loans particularly for clubs that have got a loan currently the uh, the payment holiday for re the repayment holiday has been extended until november this year so it was due to you were due to start paying back again in um in in may but that's been extended through to uh, november and then just thought i'd mention while we We've got, people might remember if they were on any of the uh, forums that we did last year, the uh, ECB County Grants Programme. So this, with the pandemic, was replaced by uh, the Return to Cricket Emergency Funding. 
but it's looking to be going live in April. So we will send information around that as soon as we get it. I think there's a couple of things that are quite important around this. If clubs are looking at that, please just, it's, it will be linked into the ECB strategy. So you need to make sure you're aware with that and what, what the priorities are within the ECB strategy. I think all the guys, Charlie, uh, Tom and James, are talking to clubs about updating the club development plan. So I think you certainly will need to have an updated development plan in place for accessing that. Um, I've also recently, we've sent out to clubs asking them to give us an update on where you are and what you're planning facilities-wise and improving your clubs. And I think so, so far we've had about 48 clubs uh, in centres return information back. So uh, please make sure your clubs in that because if they're not in that, they won't. You know, they, you won't even be in the in the in the running for for anything. Uh, and one of the thing that, that I think is worth mentioning, uh, there's within local authorities, they do have some funding through Section 106 funding, which is around development. Uh, development levies so if, the, if there's development in a local area there is often a little bit of cash available uh, to support communities and projects now that's something one or two clubs have accessed that in the past but over the past three or four months I've had an increasing number of local authorities talking to me about different projects and and indicating that there could be some support so it's it, it's really important that we know what you're trying to do and want to do so we can maybe point you in the right direction uh, for that. And I think we've even got one or two clubs on the call tonight that that, that have accessed that support. Um, Rich, do you want to move on? OK, so quickly, uh, Sport England. Uh, return to play fund. So there's three programmes that people can look at. There's a small grants programme, which is about getting people back uh, returning to play in a, in, in a coronavirus safe way. Not quite sure what that means, but I think it's making sure that everybody's, uh, you know, people have got everything in hand. Community Asset Fund, which is more around places and, and adaption. So in some areas, clubs have been able to adapt their facilities to, to make better use of something that an area that might have been previously not used. Um, so that's that's one worth looking at if you're looking at facilities all the information that you want is on their website there's a whole host of information you can link up to uh, webinars and all all sorts of things and they the last one which uh mentioned in this area return to play active together so this is 10k match funding which is linked to crowdfunding which is at the towards the bottom of this slide through what they're calling their return to play program so this is one that's we've, we've had a number of clubs that have, have taken up crowdfunding and some have been successful matching up the funding uh with sport england and, and some haven't where it's been successful it's it's been successful in a number of areas so it can help with a cricket training facility pavilion upgrades and a changing room upgrade that have had decent support um my advice to clubs is is if, if you want to go for this is make sure you read all the online information that's there. They do training sessions on a monthly basis. Uh, so you can link into one of those. I think they last for about an hour. And then there's some online courses that you can, you can run through. It's a different way of raising funding, but it can be an extremely effective way. And as I said, particularly around things like if you want to improve your net training facilities where there's not a lot of funding available, in terms of grant funding, it, it can make that difference. My advice is try and put the work in before you launch what you're going to do, before you launch your, your crowdfunding initiative. Um, Rich, do you want to move on there? OK, so, yeah, government support. So lots and lots of clubs will recall that last year, um, they were able to access a small business grant. Uh, it was around about April, May time. So lots of clubs have managed to get £10,000, which was a massive help throughout the uh, throughout the cricket season, certainly, and helped clubs become a bit more stable. 
uh, there's been some additional support which has come on online. So, and there's still some support available. What I would say to any club, if you if you've had a if you got the business rate support last year, you sh you should have a chance of accessing support currently. The the challenge is that local authorities seem to interpret this in slightly different ways. So some are being really proactive to the point where. If you got a grant last year, you've been just automatically given it, given the grant this year. And and some have been the opposite way where you've, you've got to make a little bit of the running yourself. Um, I've put all the links to your local authority sites up there. So there's things like if you've been affected by the tier system, couldn't open your club. And well, since we've been in lockdown, you might there might be a local restrictions grant additional restrictions grant. There are different sorts of grants that clubs can access. And it's worth making it's worth making contact with your local authority because throughout the county there are clubs that are accessing these grants. If you if you're not sure or a bit unsure, please give me a call or or, or send me in well preferably give me a call and I can ex I can perhaps explain it and tell you if your local authority is a proactive one or one where you have to do a little bit of a little bit of running. Rich, next slide. Yeah, okay. Um, I've just put a, one or two little bits about local stuff on there that people that you might think of approaching. Foundation Derbyshire got, they, they look after a wide range of funding programs, just generally smaller grants, small community and voluntary grants across Derby and Derbyshire. Um, Mention the Derbyshire County Council Community Leadership Fund. So that's a scheme that county councils have all got a little funding pot that where, where you can ask them to support local projects. Uh, we're not talking huge money here. I think they have something like approaching £4,000 in, in money. And they usually share that between a number of different groups. But you, can, you know, if you've got a good relationship with your county council, definitely worth asking. The... Active Derbyshire website. The website provides information on lots and lots of funding opportunities. Um, many of them nothing to do with sport, but around communities. Uh, they also do a really good regular funding newsletter, so you can you can sign up for that. Uh, CVS Network. Each area there's a there's a office, and usually it has a funding officer within it to support clubs and community organizations and often where they can where they can help is if there's if there's something locally that we might not find out about so a good example is is uh, community action in derby might inform you about the uh, east midlands airport grant and likewise in the high peak there's one or two areas that are covered by the manchester airport grant um I mentioned easy fundraising because I know there's many, many clubs doing easy fundraising. And we've got some great examples uh, of clubs that are now getting over a thousand pound a year. I know it's not it's not huge money, but it's it's good regular money coming in. And it's through your members just shopping online. Very, very straightforward if you can convince your members to support your club. And then the last uh, couple of things just met the point around new funds being released all the time. We get things out on our social media platforms. Uh, Sport England, Derbyshire Sport, Active Derbyshire, they, they do the same. And I would say to clubs, if you've got a large number of different projects or lots and lots of bits and pieces that you're doing, I think it's worth trying to get a small working group in place to, to, to sort of try and work out your approach to your, the different funds that, that are available to you. And, and lend the links into that, your club development plan. So if you've got your club development plan, you've got a good chance of being able to pick up some help or know where you need help. And I think that's it, Richard, from, from me. Sorry, I've um, pushed that out a bit, but if there are any questions. There's nothing on the chat at the moment, Mick. So um, I must have covered everything then. That's it. What I'd, what I'd suggest, if, if there are any, then I could say put them in the chat and we can pick them up when yep. we come to the question and answers a bit later. Helen, I have seen your question and we'll just we'll answer that a little bit later on if that's okay when we get to the Q&A. Um, right, okay. I think, Charlie, it's you uh, on Funds for Runs. 
Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, just flick that slide on. Thanks. Um, yeah, right. So Fun to Runs um, is a it's a new um, fund launched with Liverpool Victoria and the ECB. Uh, it's one million pounds jointly funded. Um, forms uh, can be found uh, from me. I'll be leading on this from a DCF perspective. Um, basically, the pot will be split up between all the county boards and foundations. We've got a small amount of um, funding available for projects that fit within this criteria for the projects. Uh, grants from the fund uh, to deliver free cricket activity to one or more of the of, um, of the groups on the slide. So it's, it's targeted at uh, urban and deprived areas, children's cricket, women and girls, disability and other diverse communities um, with a plan of, you know, try and making sure that more, more of these projects can, can be possible when, when we come into the summer and more restrictions are eased um, want to try and get activity back up. Um, so if there's something you're interested in, then please get in touch with me and I can we can discuss an application. I can send you an application form um, if you fit in one of those one of those criteria. Um, as I said, we've got quite a small bit of um, funding for this, so we are looking to be quite targeted with the projects that we support. So you know the projects will need to fit into those criteria on the on the slide there. Um, but it's but if you're unsure that it fits the, the the scale of the project, and then just get in touch with me, and I'll we can we can chat through that. Um, and the grants start at one thousand minimum and they go up to three thousand maximum. So there's you know there's a bit available there if you've got a project that you think might fit those criteria. Um, diverse communities, women and girls, disability, and urban and deprived areas. I think that's it on that, Rich. Yeah, thanks, Charlie. Um, yeah, just to echo what, what Charlie said. You know, we it is a really good opportunity for some some targeted projects, um, but we are limited in terms of the, the size of the pot we've got available. So I'd urge you, if you do have something in mind, have a conversation with Charlie, and we can give you a steer on whether it's something we'd be able to support or or not. You know, before you go into filling in a, an application form um, for that funding. So yeah, just, just get in touch with Charlie if it is something that you, you have in mind. Okay, I'm um, just gonna move us on to a little bit of an update around coach education um, and the coach association. Um, start with the coach association. So I'm sure there are many of you or, or some of you on the call that are members currently of the coaches association um, or the CA as it's known, um, and, and many that probably have been in the past. Um, you know. The ECB have done a lot of work recently on updating the service provided, um, making it more vibrant and, and worthwhile for members. Um, so there's been a range of, of activities going out there, uh, lots of information for, for coaches. Um, those who aren't aware, so it's, a, it's, it's, a, um, it's a, an association which provides insurance cover for coaches, uh, qualified coaches, uh, along with lots of learning resources, CPD opportunities. Uh, they run a conference biannually. Um, good, good opportunity for coaches to network with other coaches in, in different counties. Um, and there's benefits like discount on, on clothing. So the, the New Balance kit that the England um, teams wear in the ECB um, is available at discounted prices. Um, equipment, coaching equipment, again, is available. Um, in the past, there was just one membership, and to be a member, you had to be a level one, old level one, or new level two coach. Uh, so a coach that can coach unassisted. Um, they've, they've tried to address that challenge. Um, so now there's two, two membership types. There's a full member and affiliate or an associate member, um, which is effectively the full membership is for qualified coaches, which is the old, old level one. Um, the new Foundation One coach or UKCC level two and above. Um, and that is with the insurance. Um, then the associate member uh, at £10 a year is basically you get all the resources, all the CPD opportunities, but the insurance isn't provided because effectively that coach or unqualified coach isn't um, able to coach unassisted and therefore can't be insured. Um, just, just add, you know, I'd really ask that you, you send it out to your coaches. Um, it helps you from a protection point of view as well, if there's any issues within the club. Um, but also, 
from a development and CPD point of view, it, it's, it's a good opportunity for your coaches to access. Um, okay, the next one is just I coach cricket. So I'm sure some of you have seen it. Those who are activators or delivered on all stars or have done a level two course will have seen I coach cricket. Um, this is just, a, again, another resource, really, really good resource that coaches can access. Um, volunteers, anyone, it's a free resource. Um, you can get it through the App Store or you can access it through a web browser. And it's great for planning. So if you're running junior teams at your club, you can go on there, you can plan your, you know, your Monday night training session, um, the whole session. You can send it through the app to other coaches that are going to be supporting you. Um, and there's again, there's loads of visio, videos on there and, and how to guides and things that coaches can access. So I'd, I'd recommend anyone who hasn't got access to that, that's active um, with junior players worth downloading and, and having a look at. And then the final point on that slide is around the iCoach Live. Um, in 2020, the ECB delivered um, some, some live webinars, which were effectively CPD opportunities for coaches um, through iCoach Live. Um, so they had guest speakers, some of the international coaches on there doing various um, webinars. They're going to be running more of them in 2021, and the, the schedule for that's going to be out soon. So just keep an eye out as and when that comes out. We'll obviously share it on our social media and through the website um, and let you know of those, those opportunities. But again, just you know, anyone who you think it's relevant to within your club, um, please pass on the information to them. Um, in terms of coach development, we've obviously, it's been a, a real challenge over the last 12 months. Uh, I think we've cancelled, postponed four courses now um, since the start of March last year. Um, we were due to deliver two Foundation One courses and a coach support worker in January and February, but obviously had to cancel them due to lockdown. Um, what we have done is we, we sent out I think it was before Christmas, a survey form for, for you to share with your members and, and you as clubs to try and understand how many potential candidates we have out there to do courses. And, and that was just, um, that was coach education, but also things like umpiring and scoring courses. Um, so that I'll, that's in the links later in the slide. Again, I'd just recommend um, ask if you've got people that want to do courses that haven't filled that in, please do so. We're looking to run the Foundation One course, um, which is now the entry level course into coaching. Um, it's a it's a two day course plus some e learning, um, about an hour's worth of e learning, seven modules that you have to do. Um, really accessible, one hundred and fifty pounds for a, for a coach to do that course, um, and at the end of it. Um, they are a fully fully qualified Foundation One coach, able to coach unassisted in your club. Obviously, we'd, we'd hope that you'd pitch them at the right age group initially. Um, it's not going to give them lots and lots of technical um, coaching skills initially, but it's, it's the entry level. Um, and then hopefully next winter, the Foundation Two course will be ready as a follow-on to that, which will again will be another two-day top-up. Um, we're looking to run... As, as many as we can to meet demand across the summer. So we will be running them outdoors uh, as well as indoors across the summer. Um, historically, we've only done coach education in the winter. So the idea about, behind this course is to make it much more accessible at a time when you've got a workforce within your club active and ready to go. Um, so keep an eye out. We'll be, we'll be publishing dates as soon as we get clearance really to be able to deliver that. Um, the other point to make is just around the advanced coach, which is the old level three. Um, the advanced coach now is is much more accessible than it used to be. Um, in previous years, you, you had to be a performance coach effectively. So you had to be working with under 13s upwards on a county pathway, or you had to be a master of cricket at a, a public school. That's not the case anymore. Um, the idea is to try and make it more inclusive and more people can access that. So if you have any level two coaches within your club that would like to progress and develop further, um, please point them in the direction of, of the website link there. It's purely delivered by the ECB and administered by the ECB. So we don't have any involvement, but um, it, it's something you can access 
and, and coaches can access if they're minimum level two now. Um, final point for me on this one is around first aid. We've had a few questions in the, um, the registration forms around first aid. The, the, the provision for first aid in cricket still needs to be face to face. Um, so at the moment, obviously, we're unable to deliver that. Um, we have some provisional dates planned in for April and May, um, which we'll be sending out as soon as we get the go ahead to be able to do that. Um, if we can deliver before then, then we'll obviously try and get some courses on. But the intention is to deliver a number of courses across April and May um, across around the county. So anyone who booked on a course that was cancelled due to COVID um, will be making contact with and um, offering them places. And if, if they've paid, then obviously we'll honour that. Um, but there'll be opportunity to do that. Um, but unfortunately, it has to be face to face at the moment um, until there's any further development from the ECB on that. Um, Louise, I think you got your hand up. Um, did you want to ask a question on that? Or was it? No. Okay. Richard, sorry, uh, there's a question about outstanding level twos as well. Yeah, good. Good point. Um, yeah, outstanding level twos. We, <laughs> we've got about 60 coaches, I believe, that are that have gone through the level two course but haven't yet um, either completed the, the course materials or um, haven't been in touch for an assessment or anything like that. So we're aware of that. There is obviously going to be some extensions around the two-year period for, for sign-off um, due to COVID. So we're going to... John Dyson's actually picking up a little bit of work on this over the next couple of weeks, and he's going to be making contacts from the start of next week with those coaches that are outstanding for assessment. So we've obviously got we've got the, the list of everyone that's not been signed off yet. The plan is to run some assessment days uh, as soon as we can um, after after the restrictions are lifted. Um, if the restriction if the um, assessment days don't work then we'll try and get out to your clubs and, and do some assessments at the club but don't panic if you're one of those that are outstanding or you know of someone within your club that's outstanding we'll work with you to get get them through it um all i would say is if, if there is um if there is anyone in your club that's outstanding that hasn't been signed off um just just make sure that they're you know they're up to date they've done all their e-learning um and they've put they've done all the, the prerequisites so dbs safeguarding uh, in place. Obviously, the first day we we have to pause if they've not done that at the moment. Um, I think does that answer that one? Um, okay. Again, we'll pick up any more questions towards the end. Um, over to you, Charlie. I think disability champion clubs. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, last one from me. Thanks, Lee, for those that don't like the sound of my voice. Um, Working with the ECB, there's a new initiative um, called ECB Champion Clubs for Disability Cricket. Um, this is as the ECB is looking to widen the pathway um, for disability cricket. Um, at the minute, the pathway in Derbyshire is just mainly based around one club, um, and which run the county sides as well, Derbyshire Disabled, who play out of um, Darley Abbey. Um, but we're looking to grow these by setting up a few of these hub clubs um, with the ECB. Uh, Champion Clubs programme uh, involves clubs who run regular activity to become part of a key key role in the pathway um, countywide. Um, they, each, each club will receive a brand new kit bag, um, guidance and support from us and the ECB, some online training for coaches, uh, inclusion in a Facebook group and, and, and forum, uh, and also 500 pound grant grant funding, which will be given at the end of this season, um, should you should your club um, become one of the hub clubs, um, you know, using this funding next year, you can use it for promotion, additional kit, paid coaches, etc. Um, so it's 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 a good uh, opportunity for those clubs that want to, want to dip the toe into some disability cricket and uh, offer some disability um, sessions. Uh, next slide, Rich. I think there's two on this one. Yeah, so it's, it's supporting, creating a safe, inclusive, welcoming environment for your club. Um, 
opportunities to bring new individuals and families, um, bringing new ideas and, and things. So, you, you know, your club can be the forefront of creating a stable and encouraging environment um, for those individuals and their families. Uh, and you're helping to ensure that the game of cricket is accessible to nearly 20% of society, society who have a disability. So there's a big, a big opportunity to grow this area of the game should your club want to. Uh, and really no population has been affected more than the disability population during COVID. Um, the, you know, they've had a real tough time of it in that sense. Um, so applications for clubs are now open. They're open until the 30th of April. Uh, and there's a load of information on our website. If you click that link there. Um, or if you just want some more information in general, uh, then just drop us a message or give us a ring um, and I can, can give you some more info about it. Um, application form, guidance notes and more info, I can provide all that to you. Um, or if you want it, it's on the website as well. Um, so yeah, that's all on that really. Thanks, Rich. No problem. Thanks, Charlie. Um, James, I think it's you on the ACO. Thanks, Richard. I think you've got a lovely sounding voice, Charlie, by the way. Um, so for um, umpires courses, uh, there is now a brand new uh, umpires course, um, which we have a, a link for in Derbyshire, which you can click on the link there. Um, this is for parents or, or, or players. So if they're looking to get involved in, in junior games, but don't really have any experience, or if it's for the players that maybe uh, are playing lower down in the leagues and, and don't always get two umpires to, to cause any uh, issues around there, to stop them issues, should I say, then uh, this course is for them. It's a free course um, and it's, it's, it's all online and easy for you to do. Um, minim, uh, minimum age is 13 years old um, to register, but obviously if you are under 18, then a, a parent or a carer will have to register you. Um, the ACO are, are working with us. Um, so because we're going to send this out to clubs and, and we're going to try and make it into a bit of a competition as well. So we're looking at prizes um, and, and also further opportunities for those um, that are taking part because the ACO are always looking for, for new umpires, um, male and female. So, you know, so that there are per, uh, links to, to progress as well. And we're looking at running the uh, development leagues and, and the ACO are looking at uh, uh, a mentoring some of the, co uh, sorry, the umpires in, in that as well. So. Um, links are there when, when you get the slides, take a look at it, or if you want any more information, get in touch. Um, and in terms of scoring, um, Jane uh, Huff is doing the scores, courses on a Sunday. Um, they've been going, there's all different courses from, um, from the play cricket to just, just a, a good old fashioned book. Um, and, and the links are there or on our website. So if you're interested or you know people that are looking uh, to take part in a scorers course, um, the links are there. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, James. Um, yeah, what, what we'll do is add in those direct links as well to Jane's courses um, when we send out the slides tomorrow. So you'll have them if anyone's wanted to take part in those. OK, I think um, we are about there. Um, it's, I guess, over to you. If, if there's any questions, that, have we had any more on the chat um, that we need to go through? I know, Helen, I'll come back to yours now. Um, so. Helen just asked about whether we'd be surveying um, players just around the return for cricket. Um, you know, th th there's clearly going to be some anxieties out there around participants returning. Yes, is the answer. We're, we're intending to do that at some point next week. Um, it'll be a very simple survey that, that will be open to all. So not just junior players, but senior players, club officials and so on, just so we can get a bit of insight as to what the potential uh, fears may be and um, barriers to, to return into sport. Um, and then obviously we'll share those with the, the relevant leagues uh, and clubs as well that, that you know, may be affected. Um, obviously we will be, we'll be issuing some guidance in the coming week or so um, around the return to cricket. Um, and we will we'll be following up. It was one of the points on the next slide, but we will be following up with some webinars um, towards the end of the month once we've got a bit more information. But I'll come back to that in a, in a moment. Um, let me just add another one pop up. Um, the new government funding, John, I, I presume you, you're referring to the, the £300 million um, 
fund that's going to sport? Um, the the answer is we, we don't know. Um, obviously, the, the the news articles that there's 300 million pounds um, funding going to just to, to summer sport. So it's not the whole 300 is not going to cricket. It's going to all summer sport. So we don't know the am amount that's going. My understanding of that funding is it's it's around recovering losses around international sport in particular with the ECB um, and, you know, probably around the county game as well. But I'm, I'm speculating. I, I don't know. So um, we'll we'll see. I think what I would say is the ECB, I think, have supported us fairly well, um, you know, with the, the grant schemes and the, the loan opportunities, you know, deferring loan repayments for those that have got interest-free loans. Um, you know, they've continued to support us as a cricket foundation with our funding. So I think that, you know, we've, we've seen quite a bit of support already and I, and I hope that will continue as we, as we move into the, the summer. Any other questions? Yeah, Richard, there's one for Tom's going to answer okay. about s &C. Okay, yeah, so um, some of you might have seen last summer uh, something that Charlie did on creating a kind of an SNC plan um, related to the ECB and John took the kind of club. Um, so we're going to kind of reshare that with you. Uh, one of the big things that we've been talking about at the moment is, um, you know, young players have, have not done anything for a long time. Uh, if we're going to go and ask them to, to bowl a lot of overs, there's a, there's a good chance that, especially with fast bowlers, there's, there's a good chance of injury. So, um, Getting some S and C plans um, up to the to season starting is, is a good idea. Uh, so we're going to share that. It's got some some good um, good workouts that um, kids and adults could could do. It's applicable to everyone. Uh, the exciting thing as well is uh, Lauren's been working with with Jonty at the County Club to produce some videos. Uh, so Jonty's going to um, create some videos. So we might just do a simple squat where he's going to kind of talk through the key points of, of you know of what to look for when, when that's happening to so making sure that they're being done properly. Um, so hopefully that'll start going out from next week. Thanks, Tom. Um, just had one question around uh, from Jack. So are there any known funding opportunities for developing facilities for women and girls? Um, I'll, I'll let Mick come in in a sec, but one thing Mick referred to earlier in the slides was around the county grants fund. Um, We've not had the full criteria for that yet, but as Mick said, it, it will be aligned to ECB strategic priorities and, and our own strategic priorities. And clearly women and girls cricket is one of those priorities. So I'd be hopeful that there will be some funding available um, for development of facilities, albeit it's not going to be significant fund, um, but there should be you know, a reasonable amount to help clubs with projects that they might have in mind. Um, but, but as I said, there'll be more information come out about that once we get the criteria. Um, Mick, you've got your hand up. I was going to answer that question, Richard, but I think you've kind of answered it for me. I, I mean, the th I think the thing to think about all the time is that really what clubs should be doing is, is just looking at what the priorities are for different funding streams. Now, uh, currently, there's a lot been put in the in, towards COVID, but that, that will change. So... Um, women and girls is going to be a priority in lots of different uh, lots of different programs, um, but I think you know I think it's up to clubs within the development plans for evidence that that they can deliver something in return. It's, it's you're not going to get given money just because you know you say we're going to do women and girls. It's, I think I think it's going to be quite tough for to you know the next couple of three years definitely, but um, but yeah. The, the ECB one, I think it's, you know, it's likely to be aligned into the strategy and women and girls, transforming women and girls cricket, Charlie covered. So I think it's a bit of a hint to people. Okay. Um, I've not seen any other questions pop up. Um, so unless there's any others, I'll, I'll move us on just to the final, final slide, just to wrap up. Um, just a bit of a summary, really. So a few, few actions, I guess, and a few things to consider. Um, if if you're interested, as, as Charlie pointed out, in developing a women and girls uh, team or section, um, please do get in contact with them. We're really keen to support clubs in developing 
um, a women and girls offer. Facility development, Mick referred to there again, just around, you know, letting us know what your plans are for facility development, whether it be relaying squares to whole brand new pavilion builds. Um, please let us know if, if we if we don't know about it, it's hard for us to, to be able to work with you on that and uh, include you in any funding plans going forward. Um, the link is there. So if you click that link, it takes you to the Microsoft form for you to complete and, and let us know what, what your plans are. Um, club contacts. We, we've sent out the, the annual club contacts form. Um, apologies that, you know, you, I know that you, you probably input data onto play cricket. You let the league have data um, or your leagues have data. Um, it's really important for us to, to be able to keep in contact with you and, and make sure we're providing the relevant information. So um, we've tried to simplify the form. It's a bit easier, a bit more user friendly now. It's on Microsoft Forms. Please, um, if you haven't, could you could you take a bit of time just to fill that in and update your contacts for us? Um, you've you've obviously heard from James, Tom, and Charlie this evening. Um, they're all that all three of them are really keen to sit with you as clubs um, and, and work through your development plans and any issues you might have and, and provide as much support as we can. Really, so if you haven't had a one to one with them um, yet, please get in touch with them. We'll make sure their details are on the slides if you haven't got them. Um, but get, get in contact and, and you know, they'll book in a one-to-one. -one. Obviously, they'll be virtual at the moment, um, but they're keen to, to support you through that. Return to cricket. Again, I'm, it's, it's incredible. We had a call last week and it wasn't asked about return to cricket on the call. And I don't think anyone's really asked it tonight in terms of guidance. Um, obviously, the, the, the news is looking fairly positive from the 29th. Um, We've not we've not yet received the the guidance. We've had a we've had sight of a few things, um, but haven't been signed off from DCMS yet. What I would say is expect um, similar kind of restrictions to last year. Um, you know things like the sanitisation breaks, use of pavilions, those kind of things. The hospitality element we know is not there's no uh, access to indoor hospitality until mid-May, I think it is, by the government roadmap. Outdoor bars and things, I think, is from the, the 12th of April. So it gives us a bit of a steer, I think, as to what to expect from the return to cricket guidance. Um, but as I said a, a moment ago, that we will, as soon as we get the guidance and we've had time to digest it, um, we'll look to pull together another webinar or a couple of webinars just to provide that detail and support for you. Um, and help you through that. Um, so look out for that. We'll we'll share it as soon as we can um, and give you enough time to put things in place ahead of hopefully uh, the start of a, a full season, all being well. Um, I'll just quickly cover this for you, Tom. So around the one thing to mention, Tom's going to be sending out some information if, if he hasn't already around a, a county players evening. Um, so on the 19th of March, um, a few of the, the professional players from Derbyshire and coaching staff, so I think Dave Houghton and Darren Smith, I believe, are on that call, um, are going to be doing, a, if you like, a press conference, or a QA and a where your junior players can, can be engaged in the process, ask them some questions um, about pre-season, preparation, what they're looking forward to about the season and so on. So I think just a, a nice little opportunity to, to engage your junior players ahead of the summer um, and obviously ask some questions of the pros. Tom, did you want to add anything to that? I was just going to say, yeah, tomorrow tomorrow or Friday, clubs will get the information. The county club are just sorting it out on their web page as we speak, actually. Um, so so hopefully tomorrow or Friday we'll be able to be able to share it. But yeah, like you say, it's it's an exciting opportunity before the season starts, getting people back involved and engaged. Do you want me to just quickly mention the development league as well? While I'm, yeah. I know yeah. James mentioned it earlier. So, um so we're going to be running a bit of a development league, mainly for helping juniors um, transitioning to senior cricket um, this summer. Uh, kind of run on Sundays. Uh, we know there's kind of a big drop off in, in cricket from kind of what is now 13, 14 plus uh, and, and transitioning. So we're hoping that this will be an opportunity to um, to help that progression. Um, so if there's any clubs that I haven't been involved in the calls with myself and Mick recently um, and would like to get involved, please get in touch and we'll 
we'll uh, kind of get you up to speed. Uh, the kind of idea is we'll, we'll try and put you in little groups of, of, of five or six, play eight to ten games. Um, the plan is to have kind of six players in your side that's under the age of 21 or ideally that um, with those players kind of taking a big part in, in the game um, compared to mainly bowling three or four hours on a Saturday or, or something like that. Um, so yeah, good opportunity to to get involved in that if if you want to get in touch for a bit more information. Thanks, Tom. Um, and then the final one on that slide is just around the workforce. As as I said, for the the coach development, um, if you've got any coaches wanting to take part or, or attend the course, please get them to fill in that that link, uh, that form, and we'll be in touch with anyone that's that's put their name on that um, when we when we program the courses in. Um, that's it from us. Um, yes, thank you all for giving up your evening to attend. Hope you've uh, found it useful and some some good information for you. Um, we're really hopeful for a, a full season and a, hopefully some good weather is, to go with it. As I said, we will have a call a little bit later on in the month, at, at the latest, the start of April, but hopefully the end of end of March, um, to share the return to cricket guidance with you. Um, but other than that, thank you all. Stay safe, everyone, um, and, and take care. Thank you. Many thanks, guys. No problem. Thank you.